Yeah, yeah, I think you can see I, I gained back those six ounces I lost a couple of weeks ago. Ah, well, you know, the Super Bowl comes around, you're eating chips and queso for three days in a row because you got leftovers. <laughs> now it's time to shave. Hey, happy uh, Monday morning, everybody. Or is it Monday afternoon? No, it's Monday morning, and it's time to shave. Uh, for some reason, I've been getting into watching other YouTube shavers lately. I hadn't done that in a long time. I don't even watch my own videos, for goodness sake. But I started watching Ken Surfs, and I started watching Kevy Shaves, and I went and dipped back into the old uh, Geo Fat Boy stuff, and, and She Shaves with Jill, and, and all kinds of stuff. There's just so many people out there that want to share their love of this kind of shaving with you. And it's a great community out there, so there's a personality for every type of person. If you don't like the way I do things, check out some of the other folks that are doing it. And uh, so today, I just... Oh, somebody on one of those videos was using a Gillette Slim Adjustable. And I happen to have one of those. I haven't used this thing in years. I couldn't tell you how long. I can't even remember where I got the thing. But this one is from 1966. And it was the... It's what came after the Fat Boy. The old grungy fat boy. So I wanted to show you before I start shaving with the slim adjustable, the differences in case you want to buy either one of these, because sometimes you'll see a slim adjustable on eBay for sale as a fat boy. And it's kind of hard to tell unless you're, you know, looking at them side by side. First of all, it's slimmer. It, see the body. I'm going to try to hold these so it's easy to tell. So let me, okay. So the, the body of the fat boy is thicker, thus fat boy, the head is a lot. Let me angle these the right way. <laughs> oh gosh. The head of the fat boy is uh, is bigger and thicker and bulkier. Uh, the super, the slim adjustable is longer than the fat boy. And uh, the knurling on the handle is different. So this one has, and look at the uh, the adjustable dials. You see how the fat boy has vertical knurling on it right here and this has kind of like a hat a cross hatch pattern so that's another good way to tell so if you're checking out ebay and you want to buy yourself a fat boy don't accidentally spend the money and get uh, a slim adjustable which comes after the fat boy so this one stopped being made in 1961 and this one was made from 61 to 68 this one is from 1966 and we're going to shave with it today because i can't remember how well it shaves now, with my fat, the last Fat Boy shave I did, I had it on uh, six. Normally, I have it on seven. And I'm going to put this one on six, too, just because it shaved so well. And I'm going to use one of those Bic Chrome Platinums that I received recently because they shaved so well. I, you know, I'm starting to think I might prefer the Bics over the Feather Blades. Don't tell Feather. Don't tell them that I might not buy another giant sleeve of their razor blades anytime soon. Not that they care. Believe me, they don't care. <laughs> All right, so I got the blade in there, and I will not be using Barbasol of any kind during this shave, although I will be using this vintage Barbasol coming soon. And I've got a package from the fine folks at Barbasol arriving in the mail tomorrow, and uh, I don't know what they're gonna send me, but I'm excited. And the shaving cream I'm gonna use was suggested to me by a fellow in the UK who said you should try Ingram because it's got menthol in it. It's got menthol, I'm still on a menthol kick. It's winter time here, it's February, but it's not cold and I just like menthol any time of the year. So I bought some Ingram off of, I think I got it off Amazon or eBay, I can't remember, it's only like $4 here in, in the States. It's made in the UK, they don't sell it here. I've never seen it before, never heard of it. But on your recommendation, I'm sorry I don't remember your name, I, I'd have to go back and find the comment where you recommended it. You'll know who you are. I'm going to try it today in the old toothpaste tube. And the brush I'm going to use is the West Coast Shaving Synthetic. The kind with the Jolly Rancher handle. And it actually tastes like Jolly Rancher. It's a blue raspberry flavor. So don't lick your shaving brush, please. Okay, I took a shower, did my hair. Trying to put some hot, warm water on my face. I say hot, warm because it's just warming up now. Believe me, I learned my lesson after that very first shaving video I made, or one of the first where I left the water running. I still get people yelling at me in the comments, turn off the bloody water when you're shaving your face. And, all right. They all sound like that to me. I don't know. They're soccer hooligans. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Plus it's one of the only accents I can do. All right, so let's take the Ingram. And you know I love to face shave. Uh, I don't like to use a bowl because that's one less thing I have to clean. And the great thing about the, the tube of Ingram, well, upside down, let me hold it right, there we go, is that it looks like a toothpaste tube. And so you can kind of apply it to your brush as if you were putting some toothpaste on your toothbrush. And that should be about enough. Maybe I'll put a teeny bit more. I've used this once so far, but it's been a while. Uh, I got it a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it smells like, kind of like a barbershop medicinal um, shaving cream scent, like a clean sort of, with some menthol in it. So then what I do is I kind of smear around the uh, the shaving cream into the bristles. It doesn't look like much like that, but let's let's see. Now I feel like I need to put more water on my face. Let's see if that was enough. Oh yeah, that was enough. Yeah, so the scent, hmm, what does it say it is? It just says, for a closer, for a smoother and closer shave, quality lather shave Ingram contains menthol. Doesn't say what scent it is. I guess it's Ingram scent. Seems to be doing well. I got a lot of water coming down my arm into the sink, but that's why you shave over a sink, folks. But it's lathering well. It didn't look like that was that much once I uh, rubbed it in, did it? But it's doing very well. Like I said, it's got kind of a uh, medicinal smell to it. Kind of like, um, it's got the menthol, uh, almost, what would I say? It's hard to describe, almost um, just sort of an antis antiseptic, kind of clean. Uh, it doesn't smell like anything that I can place. <laughs> terrible, terrible. All right, you just have to buy some and try it yourself. It seems to be you know, lathering up very well. All right, here comes the Gillette 1966 Slim Adjustable. Ooh. I've got it on setting six, and I can tell it's a... Uh, I can feel the blade. The blade that's pretty aggressive. Boy, sorry, I was drooling because I licked my uh, shaving brush earlier. <laughs> no, that's not why. Yeah, that's an aggressive... That feels more aggressive than the six on the Fat Boy. Interesting. So the reason they got rid of the Fat Boy is because they were able to shrink down the razor itself. It's it's lighter than the Fat Boy, which some people might not um, prefer. I actually do prefer the feel, uh, the weight and the length, the heft, the girth of the Fat Boy. What am I doing all these voices? Uh, goodness, sorry. See, I always have to practice since I'm a voiceover guy. I'm always doing much to the consternation, I'm sure, of my friends and family. Anyway, so they were able to shrink down the same mechanism that they use in the Fat Boy into a smaller, lighter, thinner handled razor. And, but, from what I understand, people, um, sometimes have problems because the razor is smaller and they kind of jam-packed all the stuff that was in the Fat Boy into this smaller size. It sometimes gets gummed up. Sometimes the works, sometimes the gully works get messed up. Uh, but like I said, I haven't used this thing in years. I couldn't, it's just been, I've got all my little razors here and I look at them every day, but I just don't, like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, fat boy. So I got seven that sit here at all times. The Rockwell, you know, the grungy, the Parker 99R that I just received from Nathan, who's sending me something else. Nathan, you've got to quit sending all this stuff. You're gonna go bankrupt, son. No, so that'll be coming sometime soon, I'm sure. Um, and then I've got the 1918 Gillette that I don't ever shave with, but I've made videos. I've made videos with all these. And I've got a 1949 uh, Gillette that I never use because it was too, it was too, um, it wasn't aggressive enough. So I never went back to it. I think I didn't pay very much for most of these. And then I've got the fancy executive fat boy, the gold one, you know. There you go. There's the first pass done. Let's just feel it and see what it feels like. Yeah, there's still a lot down here. 
Like a first pass for me never gets rid of all this. It does great on my cheeks and mustache, but I really need to do like two, uh, sometimes two and a half, you know? But anyway, I've got those razors. Okay, here's what's left of the Ingram. And it's got a light menthol to it. It's not overpowering. It's not making my eyes water like the blizzard <laughs> from the sudsy soapery does. I'm not in love with the scent, but it is a nice, clean, it's a non-lingering scent, you know? Like with the one that I got from uh, uh, that sample soap, the Barrister's Cool, I believe it's called. That one has got a very strong scent, and every time I open my drawer, I can smell it. But this one, while it's on your face, and you're lathering up, you can smell it. But it's not like a lingering one, so that's good because then it won't clash with whatever, uh, you know, aftershave you might use or cologne. I had, a, after my last video, I had a couple people ask me about Dracar Noir. Somebody over in, I believe they were in Europe, but I'm not sure where they were. They were asking me if $60 for a bottle of it was, was a good price. And that seems kind of high, but then I haven't purchased it since 19, or since 2004, so... Uh, I don't know. And then a 17-year-old commenter said he wears Dracar Noir. So I was like, that's cool. Is it coming around? Is everything old, new again? I know that... Pardon me, you know, when I'm puffing my cheek, I have to hold my tongue for a minute. Um, the 90s are big right now, right? I never knew... Okay, so my wife and I, this past Saturday, went to something called the Parent Prom. Our elementary school has something for the parents called the Parent Prom. Did I talk about that in the last video? Anyway, we went to it, and they played a range of music from the various decades, from the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and not very much from today. Because in our elementary school, it's a mixed bag of, of ages. And uh, my wife and I are certainly two of the oldest parents at that school. <laughs> so, I was talking with one of the other parents, and I was like, when I was a kid, the throwback music, like the oldie station, was the 1950s and the 1960s. And never did I imagine that oldie station, I mean, they still have ones with music from the 50s, sort of, I mean, they're not as prevalent. But now it's much more so that it's the 1980s. So the 80s are my oldies. It's a strange revelation as you age, folks. I know I got a lot of young viewers, and that's cool. And I guess there are just sometimes. I mean, you can tell someone, you can tell your, your kids, you know, you try to prepare them for life, and you try to, you know, impart what little wisdom you may have learned over the years. But I think there are just some things you can't learn until you do it yourself, or until you've got a certain number of years in you, and then you realize, oh, okay, I see, and that's such, it's so frustrating. Because you just don't want to hear it, you know? You don't want to listen to the wisdom of your elders, at least not in our modern culture. Maybe it was, I think maybe in, in some cultures, Asian cultures or in Native American cultures, they, they uh, honor their elders and what they know much more than we do <laughs> in our society. Maybe that's just me feeling bad for myself. I just want someone to listen to me. Is that why I make YouTube videos? I'm gonna have to go think about this. I just want someone to listen to me. No, I actually just enjoy sharing this kind of stuff. I don't know why. I've always been sort of a performer. You know, I used to do plays. I used to do a ton of plays. I'm a voice actor. I, you know, I've been in several bands. I play weekly. Singing, I have no problem getting on stage in front of people. So it's just uh, like an extension of that. I just enjoy, you know, performing, I guess. This is kind of a weird performance. This is performance art. Yeah, my shaving channel is all about performance art now. Sorry, there I go with another dang voice. Okay, what am I doing here? Third pass? Okay, let's go real. Hey, here's what we can do. Check this out. If you have an adjustable razor, and I just read this as I was kind of researching... Uh, when this thing came out in 1966, this cost about $15. So that's not too bad. 
Whereas this one, now back then that was like a dollar fifty, and in today's money it's fifteen dollars. This one was five dollars. This is the executive, so that's like forty three dollars in two thousand nineteen dollars. So you know that's not that bad. You could buy you know some one of the fancier razors. Anyway, what was I saying? So if you have an adjustable and you're on your third pass, you don't want it to necessarily be as much expo exposed blade. You just uh, loosen the open of the doors and dial it back down. So let's dial it down to like a three. See that? And then you can do that third pass and you won't you know, get razor burn because you've already got the, the majority of uh, all the whiskers down. You just kind of want to do a little touch up. That's the beauty of uh, an adjustable razor. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I don't normally do that though. Like when I use my, uh, my fat boy, I always just keep it the same, but I'm gonna give it a try because I was reading vintage, uh, vintage uh, brochures that came with the, these old Gillette razors back in the 60s. And it was like, you know, for, for sensitive skin or for problem areas, sensitive areas, like maybe around your neck, then dial it down. I was like, of course, genius. It's cool what you can learn online, isn't it? This is a good razor. I tell you what, man. Somebody was wanting my opinion of the whole brouhaha over this modern Gillette ad and everything. And I say the biggest problem that Gillette has was that they stopped making these razors. That was the dumbest thing they ever did. I know why they did it. So they could sell those incredibly overpriced cartridges in our disposable economy. But look at this thing. Somebody paid a dollar forty-nine for this in 1966, and here I am using it. 53 years later, it still works perfectly and shaves better than most modern razors. I like them apples. Actually, you know what? I think next time I'll because I've got sort of like I've done this. I've shaved so much with safety razors now that I feel like I've got the uh, got it down. You know, I feel like I got it down, so I don't need to dial down. But that was an interesting little thing. And that's something that uh, if you're new to shaving this way, you can kind of start start small. And these things are all over eBay. And you don't have to buy a new one or a fancy one or a clean one. Buy one. Go look in your antique stores. You can find them. They're out there. They, just, they made millions of them. Because men were shaving with them for, uh, you know, at least this model for seven years. Can you imagine... How many they sold back then? So they are out there, but don't place, pay some crazy price for it. You don't need to do that. I would not recommend that. Okay, all done. All done. All right. Let me. Yeah. So that Ingram is not. It's mentholated, but not crazy mentholated. The scent is medicinal but light. Almost. I don't want to say wintergreen, but something along those lines. An antiseptic clean sort of, oh, I got a little bit, I want to take care of that right there. And you can kind of even hear it still, even after three passes, I got these, these areas that just the hair grows in a certain way and if you don't hit it that way, it's still there. I dial it back up to a, a six, but yeah, good razor. Plus just, you know, I, I love vintage things. I'm a very retro guy. I appreciate things of the past. And uh, especially when things were built so well. My goodness. All right, one more splash of cold water. And then let's dry off and end this video. Now, I know you guys have been uh, waiting for that straight razor shave that I've been hinting at. And I've been shaving with it. I've been practicing honing it on a honing stone. I've been stropping it with a strop. I've been doing all that stuff. So I've done, I've shaved with it probably five, six, seven times, which probably isn't that much in the grand scheme of things, but I'm gonna try using it. I'm gonna make a video on Friday with the straight razor. So look out for that coming this Friday. All right, so after shave, we're going back to the Stuff Shaving Company. So the stuffshaveco.com, Bay Rum Aftershave. Close your eyes. Ah, ooh. Mmm, that's nice. Bay rum, if you haven't smelled it, it smells like you're at a, at a tiki bar, an outdoor tiki bar at the beach. Because it smells like rum. 
It smells like rum and tropical spices. It's good stuff. And that didn't burn too bad. And I didn't get any nicks this time. Oh, good job. Pat myself on the cheek for that. Hey, so that's it. Friday coming up. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff in the pipe now coming up. I got all this, this vintage Barbasol I got to shave with. I got a vintage Gillette down there from the 70s that uh, I haven't shown you yet. Uh, I've been inspired by these other YouTube wet shavers. Check them out. Just look for, you know, wet shaving on YouTube and you'll find them. There's some good ones out there. There's some really cool personalities and some people that know more than I do and have a lot more stuff than I do. So it's interesting to see people that have that. But this Friday, straight razor shave. I'm a little nervous. Not that nervous. A little nervous. A little, okay. Good. It's good to be nervous, right? Then you know you're prepared. All right. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I'll see you next time. See you on Friday.